Over 1 billion people use Gmail every single day, but only a small fraction of them are actually using it to its fullest potential. You see, most people think of it as an ordinary email service. You send emails, you reply to emails. I mean, what else really is there? Well, let me tell you, there is so much more. If you've been using it the same way for the past 10 years, I'm about to blow your mind with some time-saving tips and tricks you won't know how you live without. You see, I've been using Gmail for over a decade now, and tip number five absolutely blew my mind. So maybe let's start with tip number five then. No, we have to start with tip number one. <sighs> Fine, tip number one. So for this first tip, I know you night owls are going to like this one. There are times when I'm drafting an email late at night, but it's at the ungodly hours of the night and I know my colleagues are sleeping. Well, some of them, <laughs> you know yourselves. You see, rather than sending it then, I want it to be in their inbox at a more appropriate time. And yes, I have considered waiting till 5 a.m. because it just seemed less creepy and, well, let's just say that didn't work out. But Gmail conveniently has a schedule send feature, so no more waiting or setting reminders. Here's how it works. Once you've composed your email like I have here, what you need to do is navigate down to the send option and you're gonna click on the arrow here and you'll see the option to schedule send. You're gonna click on that and you'll be presented with some options like a custom date and time like you see here, so your email will be sent exactly when you want it to. So I can choose a particular time, which is like tomorrow. So if you wish to see which emails are scheduled to go out, you can navigate to the Gmail sidebar. And as you can see here, we have the schedule tab. And once I click that, you'll see the emails that are scheduled to be sent out. Now this is perfect for scheduled follow-ups, reports, and avoiding those 3 a.m. I can't sleep emails. And trust me, your inbox will thank you. Tip number two. One thing I don't particularly love about the inbox experience with Gmail is when I click on an email from the inbox, it opens up the entire email and takes over the entire screen. And one thing I found out is that you can actually set your emails to open up beside your inbox instead of taking up the whole screen. It looks something like this. To set this up, what you need to do is navigate to the gear icon in the top right hand corner, click on that, and then once it's open, you'll see the quick settings. You then wanna navigate all the way down to the reading page section, and you'll be presented with two options, right of inbox and below inbox. I typically like to use right of inbox because it's just a bit more simple. So let's select that, close it off, and there you have it. Now, if I click on an email, it's going to open it on the right-hand side of my inbox, and I can still browse and see all of my emails on the left-hand side. Now, here's a word of caution. Whilst this tweak made it super simple to reference multiple emails without jumping between screens, I think this works best on larger screens like mine here, but on a smaller screen, it does take up a lot of real estate and it can look a little bit cluttered. So if you fancy the default view, you can just click on the setting icon again, navigate down and go back to no split and you'll have it just as you did before. But I'd definitely say give this a try first. Tip number three for the Gmail templates. Now we all have those emails we send over and over again, and whether it's a meeting reminder, a follow-up, or a thank you note. And so instead of typing each one from scratch, why not use a template? Creating a template is easy inside of Gmail. The first thing you need to do is head over to the settings area, click on all settings, and then head over to the advanced tab. Now I didn't know that I had to have this enabled, so just make sure that you have the template area or the template section enabled in this area and then click on save changes to save your changes. All right, now I already have it enabled. So what I'm gonna do is head back to my inbox and start composing a message. So once you started composing your email as usual, we'll use this hypothetical email of a meeting follow-up and I have it already pasted in my clipboard. So I'm gonna paste that there. And so once you've crafted your email, you wanna click the three dots found down here in the more options tab, navigate to templates and then click on save template as draft and then save new template. It's gonna inherit the title for this template using the current subject. So you can save that option. And let's just say I didn't have an email here. I could delete that, head over to my template. And when I'm ready to import it, I can just click on it and there you go. And so this is really easy and your email can be found in seconds. So you can send emails that are currently recurring easy and simple. So this is really simple. And the next time you do the template, just go to the template menu click on the saved one and boom, your email is ready in seconds. Now, here's a quick bonus tip. So the Gmail template feature in Gmail is great and all, but what if we added a bit of AI love to the mix? 
I literally stopped using Gmail templates when I discovered Magical's template and text expander feature. Now, if you don't know Magical, Magical is a productivity tool that lives in your browser and helps you save time on mundane tasks. And so in this scenario, I'm using Magical to handle templates a little bit differently. So I'm gonna show you how. So first things first, what you need to do is click on the Magical button that's right here in perpetuity. It's always there handy. And you can click on that option and you'll be taken to the automations. What you wanna do is click on the template tab. So now you have templates automatically available to you right within the same tab on Gmail. Now, what I really love about Magical is you can either create a template using existing information from your clipboard. Like if you had existing templates, you can go copy it into your clipboard and just have it pasted here, which I'm gonna do. But you also have the option of looking at our top rated templates of which we have quite a few just load as many as possible and we also have like different applications for these templates so you can go and utilize that if you need however we also have the option of using zendex macro so if you're using zendex in your company or in your business you can use that as well and if you're familiar with the more tech savvy side of things you can use a csv file or a json file to create a template now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on create template and create from scratch and I'm gonna add in a template trigger. Now what this is is essentially a shortcut so that anywhere in your browser in a text area you can use this shortcut to activate Magical's template feature. So I'm gonna use this here, meet follow up. And what's really cool about Magical as well is you also have placeholders. So as you notice in gray here we have first name so it contextualizes the emails and automatically inserts the person's first name if it's in the email thread, which is really awesome. Um, if it isn't, you can also just type it in. It will give you that prompt. So I'm also gonna paste the message I had previously. And now one thing I really love about Magical as well. So let's say my message was a bit different. I could add a placeholder here and just say, talk about a particular event. Okay, so once you've crafted your template, you can go ahead and click save. And you can also add tags if you need to, but in this case, I'm just gonna click save option. Now I did mention using AI. So if you're at a loss for words, which sometimes I am, you can use the AI assist feature. What you need to do is click the AI assist option presented here, and then you can type in your prompts just like you would on ChatGPT. So I've essentially asked Magical to write a follow-up response email for a hypothetical meeting and I can select a different type of writing style, whether it's casual, professional. I'm gonna go with professional here and then click on the button to activate it. So Magical is gonna do its thing. And just like that, Magical was able to use AI to craft an email. And I really love this format. It has a date as a placeholder, as well as specific topics, as well as different items we would have mentioned. So I'm thinking that this is actually better than what I originally had. That's the power of AI. So I've actually gone ahead and replaced what I originally had because it's just so much better with AI. I'm gonna save that option here. So now you can use the trigger shortcut to bring up your template anywhere in your browser. And the bonus is it works in any email client, not just Gmail. So what I'm gonna do is type in my shortcut here. So I have meet, follow up. And as you can see, I can pull information from other areas that I've potentially scraped and I can type in the first name here. So let's just say I go with John and I can put a particular date, um, let's say December 25th. Uh, I can type in the event details I need to. I'm not gonna do that for the sake of this video, but I can insert that in and it's going to automatically input it into the email. So if you forget your trigger and you can't remember what you added, you can also click on the magical button here and go ahead and search through your templates. But I'm gonna show you an even better way. You can use the magical trigger shortcut if you forget yours and it's essentially backslash backslash. I'm gonna pull this up and you can start typing contents that would be in the email template or you can actually just uh, look through in this area here. So I'm gonna look for meeting follow-up, which is what I'm looking for, and then also activates it in the same way. So this is really simple. So just like that, you have the same feature using another trigger. Now this has been a total game changer, and the cool thing is this is absolutely free. So you can check the link in the description to download Magical for yourself today on your browser. Tip number four is Smart Compose and Smart Reply. So this is more of a two-for-one special here. So I like to think of Smart Compose as if you're in a romantic relationship, and you've reached a state where you're finishing each other's sentences. Yes, that is like Smart Compose. You'll notice that as I'm typing here in my browser for a channel update meeting with my colleague, it's going to recommend her name or actually predict her name 
And as you can see, I'm talking to Joyce, so I can press the tab option and it will automatically input her name. You'll see that it sort of predicts and suggests the next part of my sentence. So just by hitting tab again, it's going to predict other parts of the sentence and I can actually just press tab as many times as possible once it's predicting and really input that in there. It's really cool and allows me to really finish off my sentences a lot quicker than having to actually type it out myself. So, you know, for you lazy people out there like myself, this is a really cool feature. Now, you definitely wanna ensure that this is actually turned on. So what you need to do is head over to the settings area, click see all settings, and in the general tab, if we scroll down here a bit, you'll see that Smart Compose is actually right here in this section. You just wanna make sure this is on, as well as Smart Compose Personalization. The personalization feature just ensures that it's personalized to your writing style. So it'll have contextual information, but it's also going to be able to kind of get your style and understand how you write so that the predictions more seem like they're coming from you and as opposed to just an AI bot. Now, having Smart Reply is more like having a super efficient assistant who responds to your emails for you. And perhaps you've seen these options, but haven't fully utilized it. First things first, whilst we're in the same area, you want to ensure that Smart Reply is on by just following the same steps we did for Smart Compose. So now I'm going to go back to my inbox and find a message from my colleague. And you'll see that if I need to respond quickly, Gmail is going to suggest a number of different responses down here. So we have, yes, I will be available at that time. Tuesday works for me. I'm not available at that time. And by simply clicking on either of these options, it's gonna input that text into the reply response text area. Now for me, I thought this was pretty cool. And what's neat is that these responses adapt to your communication style, like I said, making them feel more personalized over time. And so you just wanna ensure that you go into settings and make sure that is enabled. And honestly, I think together, Smart Compose and Smart Reply, they save you a ton of time, but wait, there's more. So we've seen how great Gmail Smart Reply is, but if you wanna take it up a notch with some AI magic, I wanna introduce you to Magical's other feature, which is the AI Reply feature. And so similar to Gmail, Magical displays reply options right under your email. But here's where it gets seriously cool, is that Magical offers yes, no, and custom options. So online Gmail, which only has the options that are provided here, Magical gives you a bit more customizability by providing the yes and no and the custom option. Now, if you click on yes or no, you can get instant, perfectly crafted replies. And honestly, I've found the replies to be way better with Magical. So let's try this out here. We're gonna click on the yes option and Magical is going to notify Joyce that I am definitely able to prepare this report for the YouTube channel. Now let's try it with the custom function. Something to note about the custom option is you can write a specific prompt. And what's neat is Magical knows the context of your emails, so it crafts the response that's totally spot on in my opinion. So for instance, say you received an email asking for a report like we have here from Joyce, my colleague. You can click the custom type, and I already have my prompt done here. So I'm using Magical's AI reply feature with the custom option to write an email promising delivery by Friday noon, which is very specific. So it's gonna draft a professional email that is context aware in seconds. I'm gonna hit reply and there you have it. It's given context as to why I'm meeting at that time. So as you can see here, Magical did its thing and we have a perfectly crafted response that I can send off to my colleague. Now, this is like having an AI savvy assistant who doesn't only know what you want to say, but also understands the context. It makes email management a breeze. Again, if you're dying to check it out, you can install Magical via the link in the description. Okay, so this has to be my favorite Gmail secret. Let's talk all about filters. And I don't know if you can relate, but I've spent hours searching for emails in my inbox that I just could not find for the life of me. Even my private documents like my license and my birth certificate, and yeah, I know it's not a very smart choice to store those in an email, but don't, don't, don't judge me, okay? <laughs> but I soon discovered filters and boy oh boy, did I not know what I was missing out on. Not only was I able to search my inbox more efficiently to uncover old emails and confidential documents, but I was also able to add a bit of automation to the mix. So let me show you what I mean. For example, you can click on the gear icon here, go to settings, and you want to navigate over to filters and blocked addresses. And as you can see, I am just <laughs> utilizing all the filters possible. But to create a new filter, you can either click up here or I like to use the create new filter button right here. And here's where I can categorize different emails based on different categories or different parameters, I should say. 
So you can do it from a particular person or for a particular inbox uh, to a particular person on a particular inbox or you can have it based on the subject. You may have some subjects that are tailored for customer support. So specific subjects that are not gonna change, you can probably have that as well. You can type in different words, which I'm gonna show you in a second here for this use case. But you can also do for attachments that are greater than a particular size. You can go kilobytes, bytes, or megabytes. All right, so this is how you would create one. Now I'm gonna show you what I did. I used one for my receipts. I typically get a ton of receipts and it's really hard having to go through each particular email in my inbox and see which one has the proper receipt. But for most receipts, the re receipt keyword is actually in there. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and added, has the word receipt or invoice because we're using Boolean knowledge here. And then I can type in or, and I can also type in payments. So if any email falls in this category, it's going to be done with a label. So I can click on continue and you can see now the automation kicks in. So I now have the option of either skipping it the inbox, uh, having the email being marked as red, starring it if it's a receipt or payment or invoice. But for me, I'm using the label feature. So I created a label and added the receipt option. I can add it to any of the existing receipts, but I just found this was so amazing. So that now when I'm done, if I update the filter, it's gonna go through all my emails and let me know which ones are receipts. I can go into my more area, click on receipts, and now all of my emails that have payments, receipts, or invoice are going to be in this folder. And so each time I receive an email, it automatically goes into this folder. This was like game changing for me. I mean, I was able to find all the files that I needed by just using the search. Of course, there are other things you can do with the filter tab. Like let's say you wanna go by a specific date, you can just type in date here and then type the exact date and then you can find it. But this automation feature was the one that really caught me off guard and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm using this almost every day if I can. <laughs> and then the automation is awesome. So I wish I knew about this feature sooner because it changed the way I cleaned up my emails and my Gmail account ever since. All right, I'd love to hear from you. What tips did you find most useful? These five tips truly changed my Gmail experience and helped me save a ton of time crafting emails, and it also helped me organize and declutter my inbox. And speaking of cluttered inboxes, if you're looking to take it a step further in Gmail, check out this other video where I show you how to achieve the sought after inbox zero.